Hi there and welcome to Casey's Train. This video is about putting signal lights on your layout. Before we take a look at any signal lights and the actual layout, we need to come up with something like this. This is my track diagram which uh, I made using JMRI. <coughs> So before I go downstairs and show you my layout and uh, work on putting actual signal lights on the physical layout, I want to briefly run through how I got to this point with all these lines and these little dots, colors, circles, whatnot. There are a number of videos on YouTube about how to do this kind of diagramming. But very briefly and very quickly, how do I get this diagram? The first thing I do is I download a program called JMRI, Java Model Railroad Interface. I go to their website, they tell me what it is about, and uh, I download it. And when I download it and install it, <coughs> it will put on my screen this icon and this icon. This has to do with your railroad locos and cars and whatnot. I haven't got into that yet. This is the one that uh, I click on, double click, and it will come up with this. And so then I go to panels, new panel, layout editor, and uh, it will give me something like this. I can go to Tools and I can uh, put on the How-To's. Somewhere in here you'll, you'll find an instruction sheet on how to add turnouts, track segments, all this sort of stuff. Again, there are videos out there that will help you do that. So after you get your layout drawn, what we need to do is to divide our track into blocks. Remember, we're getting set up for putting on signal lights. We have to do some blocks to do that. We go to here, Tools, left click, Tables. We've already done this with Turnouts. We go down to Blocks. <coughs> of course, this will all be empty. We will add a block. These blocks that I have on here, because I'm working with the simulator rather than with the actual JMRI that's going to control my trains, it will put IB, internal block. I just have to put a number in here. And I put a username in. Yard 1, Yard 2, Cement, Sawmill, etc. And when I click on Create, then it will put them all into this table and populate the table with all the various blocks. And then I can go back to the uh, <coughs> to the layout and uh, I can put in these sensors. But before I do that, I have to determine which track sections I want in which block. Uh, I'll show you because I've already got the sensor in. I click on it and that indicates to the program that that block is occupied. So you can see here that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six sections of track between these green little squares. And in the middle of each section of track, there's a circle. That tells me that it is a track segment, T42. It, it does that by itself. 
T38. I don't know how or why it gets those numbers, but it does. But for our purposes, what you want to do is you want to set all the track sections that you want in the block. You have to tell JRMI what block you want. So you this won't this will be empty. So you go down to edit and you will click on this and this will show you all the blocks that you have put into your uh, your block table. Remember that? See there they all are. So you just decide which one, which block name you want to ascribe to all these sections. And uh, done. Of course, you're going to have to do a little bit of work looking at your uh, actual layout to decide uh, how long you want your blocks to be. 5 feet, 10 feet, 1 foot, 2 feet, whatever. But I'll show you some of my blocks to give you an idea of their length. Okay, we've got this thing set out into blocks. Then we have to put a sensor in each block. And this is the icon, a little circle. And the way we do that is when we click on this block, edit, create edit block, we go to sensor where did it get this from? Oh, right. Forgot to tell you. What you do is you have to go back to tables. We had blocks here. Now we have to go up to sensors here. <coughs> and we have to add our sensors. <coughs> These are all my block names. So I just make a sensor for each one. And this will be empty, of course, except for this is clock running. Just leave that alone. So you add. Now it will ask for the system connection. Hasn't done that before, but it can either be internal or local net. If you're using local net and Digitrack stuff. So then you just put in a number here. Let's try this. See if it works. And you can put in a username. Create. And there it is. It will add the LS to your number and put that in. So we have our sensors. And then you go onto your layout and uh, get your. Um, uh, get your. Uh, options and tools and whatnot. Uh, I forget where, but it comes up with instruction sheet uh, on how to add your sensors. You can figure that out or find somebody else to tell you how to do it. I've lost my way here. And then you just put the sensor where you want it. Again, sensor icon, mountain 1, and it's LS14. So, see, there's the block, mountain one, and there's the sensor that goes in that block. Okay, so we've got sensors in all our blocks. And again, if you click on the sensor, it will tell you that that's occupied. And you can see if you've got all the right track sections that you want in there. Okay, now what? Now we want to work on our signal lights. Okay, so I am using a Digitrack stuff, and uh, when I get downstairs, I'll show you the actual piece of hardware that Digitrax uses to control turnout uh, signals. Essentially what we have, here's a turnout. Essentially what Digitrax does with their uh, hardware is establish four 
signal lights, we call them heads. I'll get to that again. Four per turnout. You can see that when I click my turnout icon, uh, the lights change on the uh, signal heads. Of course they change. And I'll explain that a little bit too in this session. Okay, so what we do to get these cute little red and green and yellow buttons on there is we go to tables. Turnouts we've done. Sensors we've done. Blocks we've done. Now we go to signal heads. <coughs> well, that's interesting. What is all this stuff? This will be blank. So what you do, you're going to add. What I'm going to show you then is this. Turn out LT1. So I go to signal heads. It's empty. And I'm going to add. It comes out double output. I click on this arrow. I go down to SEHC4 aspect. We'll talk about aspects later on. Uh, we give it a username. Here's our usernames. <coughs> what Digitrax does with its SEHC controller is it asks you to establish an A1 head, an A2 head, a B head, and a C head. For this turnout, this is A1, this is A2. This one controls the main route. This one controls the diverging route going this way. This is B, it's on the uh, main route going the other way into the turnout. And this is C going the other way, diverging route into the turnout. So what you have to do is give it a username which I've done here, turnout LT1, because this is turnout LT1, and then I do A1, A2, B, and C. So we do this one first. Now what Digitrax does with its SE8C controller is it gives uh, turnout addresses to the thing. And you won't have any numbers, so what you do is you create new, and then you go into the uh, manual that comes with the SE8C and and find out from it what number you put in here. They call it turnout 1 and turnout 2. Uh, that is this signal head. <coughs> they will tell you to put number 257 into here and 258 into here and then you create it and it will put this into your table with the name you gave it and with those two numbers. That takes care of this one. And then this one is A2. So you go into here, turnout LT1 A2. And this will be empty. You create new and then you give it the numbers 259 there. Uh, to 60 there, create, and it will put that line in, and you just keep on going down. You will see that uh, the addresses go from 257 to 264 for that turnout set of signal lights, and you just keep on going down. So for turnout LT2, you get 4, 3, there are 4, and so on, until you get... Uh, eight of them done, which is what the SEHC allows you to have on your layout. Eight sets of uh, signals. After you get those, oh, just a minute now, how are we going to get those little, cute little circles on here? Now what you do is then you right click on the turnout, go to signal heads, Left click, set signal heads. So you have done this already. Put all these in. Uh, continuing is your A1, this yellow one. 
diverging A2, this red one, continuing this green one B, and then C, diverging. And all you do is you tell it to place all the signal head icons, or do one at a time, and uh, when you go done, it will put them where they're supposed to be, right here. It is so exciting. Well, after you get them all in, they will look like this. They'll be black. Right click, and uh, that's because, what did I just do? I right clicked, I went to Oops, uh, let me try that again. Oh, it's clicking on the uh, anchor point. Let me get that out of the way. No. There, okay, now we go to edit logic and we see uh, there's nothing in here. All right. What we do, let's go back down here. Right click, edit logic. Hmm. <coughs> All right, this one is on the main leg of the turnout, so we click that. What this does here is gives us a number of options as to what that particular signal head is going to control <coughs> and what will cause it to turn green, red, or yellow, because those are the four colors we have. So it tells us that we want it to protect a sensor or sensors, gives you a whole bunch here. What I've done, because this thing controls my uh, outer, what's the name of this thing? Town outer. So it's going to protect the sensor in town outer, which is this one. Because it controls that particular route. It will turn red when that turnout is thrown. What turnout? This one. LT1. See? Turns red. How about that? Protect signal. <coughs> what signal? The next signal along that route that controls the main line, which is this red one here. So, what this actually does is it turns it yellow because the next one, next signal head along that route is red. And this yellow tells the engineer, slow down because the next signal you come to will be red. Now, if I went like this, then this one turns green and says to the engineer, you're clear to go all the way through. That is all done on this little panel here. Uh, you apply and then it's set. And you do that for each one of these heads. So I've got these all connected. I've got them to connected to the turnouts. I've got them connected to the, to the sensors all through that table that I just showed you.